Hi, I'm Andrea Harriman. I'm an infant feeding lead for North Cumbria. And I'm going to do an infant feeding bite size video today on meeting your baby for the first time and having skin to skin. Now, this is a really important time for parents. It's the time that they've been waiting for for the whole of the pregnancy. And we want this environment to be lovely and calm and relaxed and not rushed. Now, when baby is born, we would recommend that that skin to skin starts straight away. And this doesn't matter what environment you're in, whether you're at home having your baby or whether you're in a labour room or the theatre, doesn't matter. Skin, skin to skin is really important to a parent. And baby will be put straight onto the mum's chest. And we recommend that mum is into a semi reclined position, so not too far back, but not sitting too much upright and that the baby is placed lengthways between the mum's breasts and the head is usually moved to one side so that the baby can maintain its airway effectively. And a, a blanket will normally be put over the parents to maintain that temperature and keep baby nice and warm. Now it's really important that mum focuses on the baby and is not distracted by anything else that's going on and it's a time when they can start to discover the baby, get to know their baby, start counting the fingers and the toes, see what the baby smells like. And this really helps with that relationship between mum and baby. And it's very important. We want to make sure that baby and mum are kept safe so everybody around the mum will be supportive of this. Lots of benefits to skin to skin. And we're going to go through some of those. And the, the first one is really about stabilising the baby after birth. So we know that when you're in skin to skin, that will stabilise the baby's heart rate and also help maintain that temperature. The baby will be cold and wet. And in skin to skin, the mum is the hottest person. So that's an ideal place to be. It will help to stabilise baby's breathing rate and also to decrease the, decrease the stress levels by about 75%. So it's a really important place for baby to be, and it will be a familiar place for, for baby. Baby will start to recognise the, the mum's voices, all of that bonding that you've been doing whilst you were pregnant, rubbing tummy, talking to baby, that will all really help and um, start to, to build up those mothering hormones and that promoting that close and loving relationship and that familiarity will be there. You cannot spoil a baby. Um, you want skin to skin whenever is necessary, whenever is, is wanted by mum or baby. And that can happen at, at any point. And it doesn't matter if it's a week down the line, a day down the line, um, it, it, it should happen as frequently as the, as the parents wish. Um, there are some nine stages that the baby goes through and we want to make sure that those stages aren't, in, aren't interrupted and they are unhurried so that the baby can just naturally go through those nine stages before it has a successful feed. Skin to skin should happen for as long as the parent wishes, ideally at least an hour, but definitely until after that first feed. And we recommend that that first feed is carried out in skin to skin, whatever way you want to feed your baby. Partners are encouraged to have skin to skin, but usually after mum. Having skin to skin will promote that feeding behaviour and it really gets baby to that instinctive feeding cues. And that's really important. Um, we talked about happening at any point. So if baby's perhaps a little bit hungry, skin to skin is great to settle a baby before a feed. Or if baby needs rousing for a feed or mum just wants a cuddle, then skin to skin is good again. When the baby is in this position, it starts to lick and nuzzle at the breast and it picks up these gut friendly microbes on the skin and it ingests those and feeds and protects the baby's gut, boosting the immune system. There's some hormones that are involved with skin to skin. The first one is prolactin. So this helps make the milk. So really important. We like to think of it as the chest. Really important to ensure that um, the milk is made to be good for that future milk production. And oxytocin is the other hormone, and that's the hormone of love. We like to think of it as a wafer, so it helps to transfer the milk from the breast to the baby. And that oxytocin is the one that will really help you to fall in love with baby, build that strong attachment with baby. And then we have the microbiome, which colonizes and seeds um, friendly microbes and really immunity 
boosting and protecting from infection. And this friendly bacteria can share and influence the health of the baby. So the nine stages that baby goes through, it starts off with the birth cry and I've arrived into the world. And then the baby will need a relaxation stage. Everything's a bit overwhelming and they just need to take a little bit of time. The baby will become a bit more awake and start to be familiar with its environment, for instance, its parents' voices. And it will start to be a bit more active and start to think about exploring. So some of those feeding cues, the hand into the mouth, the opening their eyes, their rooting will all start to begin. Baby will need to go through several rest phases throughout the whole of these nine stages. And this is just them relaxing, taking their time and processing what they've learned. It's a new skill for mum and baby. And if we can let the parents and the baby just learn how to do this themselves, and um, it's less likely that they're going to need more support with feeding after next week. Baby will become a little bit more active and do a little bit of crawling, sliding, leaping, pulling up its knees, and that's them trying to find the breath. They become a little bit familiar, and this is the time when it's really important to just let this happen and don't rush them. When the baby's ready, they'll begin sucking, and once they've had a successful feed, they'll have a period of sleep before the next feed. If we do interrupt the baby during any of those nine stages, then they have to go back to the beginning. So really important that we leave them undisturbed. Now we mentioned the feeding cues, and this is really important to be aware of your baby's feeding cues. And most of the time it starts with these early cues, things like the stirring, the mouth opening, the baby starting to move its head and turn and root. And that's the time when we really want to start that skin to skin and that feed. Baby might then develop a bit more of a mid-feeding cue, hands into the mouth and starting to get a bit more active. And if we get to the point where baby's crying and upset and turning red, then that's less likely that we'll be able to easily feed the baby at this point. We might need a period of skin to skin to calm the baby down. So enjoy having this moment with your baby and having that skin to skin. And if you do decide that you want some further information, then there's some good, really good videos and links on the Badgenet app from UNICEF. And there's some support groups um, all around the county which you can go to. A lovely video called magicalhour.org and your community midwife would be more than happy to give you some extra um, information and support. If you do find that you need any specialist information and infant feeding support, then please contact myself or Denise. Um, thank you very much for watching.